Good morning. This is the Hoosier Huddle Podcast. I'm Sammy Jacobs. With me is special guest Marty Smith from the Marty and McGee Show on the SEC Network, ESPN. Uh, Marty, I've always been jealous of what you guys do on your show. And then going to the Myrtle Beach Bowl looks like some of the most (laughs) fun times uh, that you guys have ever had. So welcome. Thank you for coming on. Um, You know, Indiana football, 8-0, 5-0 in the Big Ten. How awesome is this story from going from three and nine last year to now eight and zero, oh and maybe being that playoff Cinderella? It's the best story in college football. Uh, I I really love what Coach Signetti is doing. I love that he walked in a building and said, you know, the Google me line, which I, y'all got t-shirts yet? Because if you don't, somebody's missing out on a great opportunity. I love the conviction that he has. I love that he's bringing Coach Saban's process to Bloomington. College game days there, unbelievable scene. Just just everything about it is wonderful. I think the only story, overall story in college football to me, that is in the same sentence is Vandy. And Vandy's not undefeated like, like you guys are. And so just an absolutely amazing story. I think it's also proof positive that when you have a leader – and then you have a quarterback that are are both elite, and they both are elite. It's amazing what can happen, and you guys have that. Uh, it's it's just it's remarkable to me, and I didn't have it on my bingo card, Bubba. I can tell you that. A lot of the off season, people are saying doom and gloom about the sport of college football, but stories like Indiana Army, you were up at West Point last yep. week. Vandy knocking off Alabama. How healthy is the soul of college football? Because that's what it's all about. It's about those fall Saturdays in Bloomington. And game day kind of mixes both worlds with with the corporate world and just the soul of college football. How is the health of this sport right now? I think the health of the sport is incredible. I mean, numbers, look at the TV numbers. They're outrageous. Stadiums are full. People are enjoying the game so much. Now, there's also obviously the caveat of what's going on with NIL and the portal and that whole thing, and that that is a mess, all right? There needs to be guardrails. There needs to be parameters. There needs to be oversight, uniform oversight. That is, to me, uh, inarguable. It is, it is unequivocal truth that there has to be some sort of uniform governance of those things, and there's not right now. We get to the uh, we're, we're about to be in a, an era of profit sharing at the player level, television revenue. Even more reason why we need some oversight. But the games, incredible. The atmosphere is incredible. The young men play in the games, brother. I say this all the time on College Game Day, on Marty and McGee, on SEC Network, on radio, on anybody, anywhere I can say it. The most underreported aspect of collegiate athletics and certainly football is the quality of the young people playing the games. It is great young people who are working hard and who are representing these universities at a very high clip under a lot of stress and a lot of of pressure. And so I think the health of the game is awesome, but we do have to kind of get our hands. And Nick Saban warned us, bro, I remember SEC media days in like 2018 or 17, whenever NIL first started to be filtered. He said, look, we got to have guardrails, and the man's not wrong ever. I mean, by the way, as an aside, how great is he on college game day? Holy cow. He's awesome. He's awesome. It was awesome to have Miss Terry on college game day. And our guy Kyle Schwarber is the only one to have a better record than her picking games. So he, <laughs> he, he is a great addition to college game day. He really is. Um, and, and, I mean, he, he's a big fan of Kirk Signetti, too, and, and that process. And, and you and mentioned it before. You look at his tree. You look at the tree, and it's just astounding. All right? You look at the best teams in the country. Kirby Smart, Steve Sarkeesian, uh, my, uh, uh, Mario Cristobal. Hurt Signetti on like just keep going. It's remarkable how these guys come Lane Kiffin uh, at Ole Miss. You look at what these guys are doing, how they've taken what he's learned, 
and the daily walk that it requires, the discipline that it requires, and the tutelage that they have taken and passed on to their programs and instilled that process into their program. It's just, it's remarkable to me. Uh, he's the greatest of all time, he being Coach Saban. It's not debatable. And I will tell you quick, his influence on my daily walk, I was at Alabama probably more than any national reporter over the last 10 years. I've, very few people whom I've ever met impacted me as a man more than Saban. And I'm grateful to him. Yeah, you could see the impact of just, you know, Kirk Signetti's got 90-minute football practice. That's unheard of. 90 minutes, yep. come in, get what you need to get done, and, and go back. I remember former IU football coaches – players would tell me, yeah, we had to do the entire practice over again. And it was three hours and it's insanity. Um, but let's talk about some of these guardrails. Are they coming? Is it, this has been, you know, so obvious the last wow. decade or so that it's coming down, down the wire and people kind of shoved it under, under the rug, into the closet, uh, kind of like you do with the, your messy room. But w what can we expect in the next 12 months to, to kind of get this under control? I think the biggest thing that has to happen is there needs to be some sort of middle ground from the conference commissioner level. And we see what Greg Sankey, Tony Petiti are doing with the SEC and the Big Ten and how they're starting to emerge and really start to work more in unison with one another. These conference commissioners don't care about each other's conferences, man. They care about the member institutions in their conferences and maximizing the opportunity, the revenue, the dominance, the TV deals, the experience of their member institutions. And they should because that's their job. But if we're going to find these guardrails, I think there needs to be a commissioner named who is that? Like, who becomes the commissioner of college football? Everybody goes, Nick Saban. Why the hell would he do that? He's killing it on TV right now. He's making good money. He's cutting up with McAfee. But he loves ball. So, who knows? Uh, maybe it's Mac Brown, whom I've said for years I thought would be an awesome college football commissioner. Of course, he's the head coach of North Carolina. Some of your – Viewers or listeners may not know that. And won national championships. He knows every angle. Won national championships at Texas. Was on TV for years with us at ESPN. Uh, is I mean, he's the governor of college football. He'd be a great candidate. But do those guys want to do it? I don't know because there's so much to fix. So I don't have any idea what that looks like. None. It's, it's above my pay grade. I'm not that smart. Um, but I think the very first step is the most difficult step, which is getting those commissioners to go, all right, boys, we got to find common ground here. Yeah, we saw the the alliance between the ACC, Big right. Ten, and Pac-12 that, last, that lasted about five minutes. No no written work. It was a, it was like the Wild West dealings, uh, people shooting each other in the back. Um, do, you, do you foresee something where – whatever, the top 65 teams in that power four break off. I mean, one of um, IU fans' biggest fear is that Indiana gets left out because they hadn't been good in football until this year. Do you um, see teams like that getting – is there a legitimacy to that fear of getting left behind? I, I would say that they're probably in that, that borderline conversation. Now, this is off the top of my head. I've not sat down with my notepad and gone, okay, let's do this. Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia. I've not done that, all right? But in my mind, I, I, I would see, I could see where Indiana would be one of, like Oklahoma State, Indiana, like those. They are massive brands. They are. But I don't I don't know what the criteria would be. I don't know 
what because if you look at the current Big Ten and the current SEC, that's 34 teams. Is that correct? 18 and 16 is 34. Yep. So is that half of your is that half of your super conference? I don't know. I don't know what the vetting process looks like. I don't know what I don't know what I don't know, man. Um but those are some humongous brands. Yeah, All, and it seems seems to be coming down the pipeline pretty quickly too. When when you're talking about the SEC brands and you're talking about the Big 10 brands, especially the new Big 10, when you got those four schools out west, those are brands, man. And so above my pay grade homie <laughs> yeah. let's get into nil um on the good side a little bit indiana has some collectives there's a hoosiers for good which kind of compensates players for their time doing charitable work you know there, there was posts on social media before look game day was coming to town They're seven and oh there's a lot of hype they were in elementary schools reading to kids and that to me as a teacher is what it's all about it's you know you make these kids days by coming in and reading a book and hanging out and all that stuff. Um, I want to talk about your, your game change uh, platform. It, it's a, it seems like credit card companies and companies have been doing this forever where they ask you, Hey, round it up to the nearest dollar yep. and, and we'll donate it to, to whatever charity or whatever organization it is. Um, just walk us through it. How did it take one? That seems like a no brainer for NIL and two, um, what's the opportunity for not only Indiana fans, but you know maybe some of the fans of the other teams who listen to our podcast to to have this impact their schools? Biggest no brainer ever. Like I mean, and it's easy. It's so easy. You just go to gogamechange.com, input your credit or debit card of choice, and pick the University of Indiana or Indiana University, and go. Hey, uh, I love I love the Hoosiers, and I want my money to go there, and every purchase you make with that credit card automatically rounds up and boom, that difference goes right to Indiana. Is, that easy? is there, is there a limit or any oh. limitations on this? Oh, and every single charge you make also enters you every time that you use it into the opportunity to win prizes like cash or gift cards. And so it's just the biggest no brainer ever. And you think about it in this era where we're trying to, all of us are trying so hard to figure out ways to benefit our schools. And not all of us have a lot of money in our pocket to throw around and put our name on buildings, right? This is such an easy way to do it. And you're, it's genuinely going to directly to the athletic department, and then they choose where they want to disperse it, whether that's facilities upgrades, whether that's scholarships, whatever it is, fan experiences, whatever they want to do with it but you're directly benefiting the university you love and the athletes that inspire us so much. And so it's just so easy. Go gamechange.com, put in your credit card, pick Indiana and boom, you're instantly go buy your coffee and you're instantly helping the school. And this is, like, yeah. we're talking about Indiana, man. Like think about Indiana state. Think about uh, Valparaiso. I went to Radford university for us. It's about survival in this iteration of college athletics. Because, you know, if we have a great player and then some guy averages 22 a night in a Big South Conference, don't think P4 schools aren't going to come calling because they are. And so how do we incentivize these young people to stay? Well, game change is a great way to do it. Go gamechange.com, put in your credit card, pick your school, and you're instantly helping them. Yeah, this is an idea that if you and your buddy are sitting in the bar going, man, how come we didn't come up with this 10 years ago um, type of idea? I wish I but, did. Yep. Marty, thanks for your time. Uh, we hope Indiana stays at, at one of the top uh, stories in college football. There are awesome other stories uh, to follow as well. Um, tell us where, where you're going next, and we'll get you out of here. I am this weekend going to the world's largest outdoor libation soiree. In Jacksonville, Florida, we're not allowed to call it the world's largest cocktail party anymore, uh, even though that's what it is. Um, I got the Florida-Georgia game. Georgia's won three in a row. The dogs haven't beaten the Gators four straight years since 1983. 
Uh, I fully expect that to happen, but it's a rivalry game. You just don't know uh, if the dogs don't show up. I think Kirby will have them right. I'll tell you something about that Georgia team. I believe after they lost to Alabama, uh, Kirby has been so tight, all right? After that game was the loosest I've seen him in a while, and I know why, because that comeback in the second half, even though they lost, they came back on the road, had an opportunity to win the game, down 28 to nothing, and Kirby right then knew I have a national championship team. And then they go out and they boat race Texas. And I just they got it right. I mean, if they can not turn the football over, they're going to be hell to pay. And so uh, that's the game I have. Really looking forward to getting down there. We do it every year with SEC Nation, Marty and McGee. And the crowd is always tremendous. Tebow and Laura are going home to their people. And that's always fun. And so we just love it. We're full of gratitude to get to do it. And can't wait to get down to uh, down to Jacksonville. All right. If you need a little uh, SEC in, in your blood, IU fans, tune into SEC Network. Uh, watch their show. They do tremendous work. It is This is one of those rivalries that makes this sport great. And, it you know, it's, is. It, it, it is. And we have a couple of them in the Big Ten. They don't play for a pig or a spittoon or a bucket, but it is <laughs> one of those. It There's is a big one, one this weekend, spe- buddy. Spe- special, uh, special, special games. Uh, in college football. Uh, GoGameChange.com. Thank you, Marty. Safe travels. Good luck this weekend, and we'll be following your work. Sammy, thank you, brother. Have a great day. Appreciate the platform so much. Y'all be good.